Awesome. Okay. Well, before we get into uh, our, 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 our panel discussion here with all these wonderful rookies of the year, just a few company updates for those of you uh, primers who are watching. Uh, as you probably saw on the agenda, our new agent welcome party is this Thursday from two to four at Earl's, uh, Earl's Polo Park. Uh, we'll also be closing the offices early that day. So just so you're aware, make sure you have your deposits, any paperwork in earlier as we're going to shut down uh, and make sure our staff can attend the party as well. So hope to see you there. Again, Earl's Polo Park, two to four, as we welcome all of the new agents to Royal Page Prime. Uh, there was also a note in there for uh, some training. Make sure you check that out. Uh, Royal Page is putting on some great training this week. Uh, there's a Richard Robbins webinar uh, tomorrow. And that is, check out the link in the agenda. And that is about staying ahead of the real estate curve. So make sure you check that one out. Richard Robbins always has good stuff. And there's some other webinars available there on YouTube uh, 101. Uh, lastly, on the announcement side of things, just a reminder that as of March 31st, FinTrack, our wonderful F word, uh, has um, changed the rules as to third party identification and, you know, you can no longer ident ID people over Zoom. Uh, so you'll have to take other measures when identifying people who aren't uh, physically present. Uh, if you have any questions about that, uh, we'll do some more training upcoming on that, but uh, that's not what today's about. But in the meantime, ask Jenna. She is our compliance officer, so make sure you ask Jenna um any any questions you might have about IDing people who aren't physically present all righty so those are the quick announcements so today we'll let's move into our, our main part of the of today's meeting of course and that is our wonderful rookie of the year panel so again congratulations to all of these rookies of the year uh who've won across the country for royal LePage. page and uh so maybe i'll just kind of go and then sorry i'll go and miriam as well I'll start with you maybe because um, not only did she win Rookie of the Year for Quebec, but also for got the National Award. So give her a big round of applause. Yay, Miriam. Good job. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so maybe we'll just do. And again, I know this is kind of weird. We got five people on the call, um, you know, panel thing. It, it can get a little bit awkward sometimes. So we'll just have some fun. We'll relax a bit, but I'll ask some questions and maybe we'll just start off with a quick introduction. Uh, so I'll start just in the top, my top left corner is Miriam. So maybe Miriam, just tell us. Um, you know, introduce yourself, uh, whereabouts you are in Canada, and maybe a fun fact about yourself or how long, I guess we've all been doing this, I guess you've all been doing this business less than two years now because of the rookie of the year part, right? Yeah. But uh, maybe a quick introduction. We'll start with Miriam. Yes. Hi, everybody. So I'm, uh, I'm an uh, agent until uh, 24 months now. So I begin at, in the, the beginning of the pandemic. It was very, very difficult, but I survived. <laughs> I was working all the time. I didn't listen TV, so I didn't see all what's happening on news. Well, that's it. So I was, uh, before, the, uh, before uh, being agent, I was uh, in the food for 15 years. And after, so I was entering all the, the industry of the food. And after for eight years, I was uh, selling box in the industry of the box, and uh, I'm in um, in the industry of the paper. So I'm a printer too. So I've been prospecting for eight years. Uh, so I know that when we prospect, we have to go. We we just put some, you know, when when you you do some. Uh, uh, you put some some stuff everywhere and it's grow and it's grow. So you, you don't have to just prospect one thing. You have to prospect a lot of things to to make it bigger. So so that's oh. it. So um, yeah. Awesome. And whereabouts? So and, and where in Quebec are you located again for our, our, for our mean, viewers? Uh, well, it's everywhere. So principally, it's Terrebonne. It's Mascouche, we have Montreal, we have Boucherville, I have the, it's uh, Blainville, it's everywhere. So it says La Naudière, uh, big Montreal, and it could be in Laval too, and it's all the big stuff here. So from my house or from the, 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 uh, the, um, the main principal uh, of my office, it's like 15 minutes. It's not very far. That's right. Okay, so any of those, uh, again, part of this, hopefully we can get some referrals sent your guys' way. So anything going out to the Montreal way, call Miriam, <laughs> right? <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Miriam. Uh, Ryan, yeah. out, east, out east. I'm uh, East Coast, St. John's, uh, doing majority of the, the island, actually, Newfoundland. 
Um, yeah, two years coming from energy sector, did a lot of oil and gas work, uh, worked with our utility uh, service provider for the last, uh, up to March of last year. So I was only part-time until uh, this time last year. Um, and uh, father of two, got a lovely wife. She keeps me in check. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining yeah. us, Ryan. Uh, Anna, and most yes, people know Anna, but it, yeah, may as well go introduce yourself as well to the, the rest of the panel here. Hi, everyone. I'm Anna. I'm in Winnipeg. I, uh, I've been in real estate now for two years. Um, you know, I, I, I used to be in healthcare for 20 years, I guess about 20 years as a healthcare aide. Um, so I worked um, in the hospital and, you know, I just loved helping people. Um, and then when I, you know, it, it got a little bit tough. It's, it's a tough job. Um, so I give credit to anybody who's working in healthcare, but, um, and then I met my husband and he was kind of, he was building some houses. He was renovating houses and he started flipping some houses. Right. So it kind of natural progression was to become a real estate agent. Um, so here I am and I've enjoyed every minute of it. I love it. <laughs> every minute i don't know about every minute no one well, does every i think every minute. Minute. i'm sure i can i sure i can find a few minutes in there Anna. But i'm just <laughs> i'm, I'm sure just, just <laughs> yeah no i'm just joking right on uh abe welcome abe yeah hey just sorry my son is right in the way here <laughs> all good you know i'll come uh, you can probably hear me abe. i'll come back to you abe, once you get that settled uh wendell welcome from hey, BC, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I, so are we, is it just about how we started? Just, just, yeah, just a quick introduction, where you're from, what areas you service, mm -hmm. what maybe you did before real estate. Uh, so before I started real estate, I went to uh, university for math at Simon Fraser. Um, finished university, took my real estate uh, license probably, um, one semester before I finish university. I service over here in Vancouver, um, mainly residential, maybe detached properties. And yeah, it's been like that ever since 2019. Okay, awesome. Well, welcome Wendell. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm curious to see how somebody who graduated with a, you know, taking math in university ended up as a real estate agent, a successful one. Usually those two things don't go together. So I'll pick it right on that. Uh, Abe, it looks like you're settled. Abe, uh, maybe a quick introduction for you. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Abe Peace and I'm from Ontario, um, close to Kitchener, small town Listowel is where my office is. I live 15 minutes away from there. I service a pretty big area, about two hours ratio. I go up to London. Uh, haven't done a whole lot in Toronto, but a uh, pretty wide area. I work with a lot of uh, Mennonites and Amish in our community here. So that's a huge reason for my success. And uh, yeah, before I'm only 25, so I'm a young guy. Um, before this, I was doing, I've had many different jobs. So throughout my different jobs, I've met and uh, got to know a lot of different people, which I end up selling homes to now. So that worked out pretty good. Um, yeah. I never went to school much here either, so I, I don't have any high school, any college degree, nothing like that. I just kind of went and took my, uh, there's, there's a course that you got to do if you don't have your uh, GED or your high school. So I did that and I passed and, and I had a lot of family and friends that told me they, I would never make it. And I guess that just gave me the courage to go out there and try. So I've been doing, uh, mm. pretty good. So, yeah, well, uh. I, I bet, you know, rookie of the year is no easy feat, especially for such a large uh, province as Ontario. So I love that, that you had uh, people were doubting you and you're, you're proving them wrong now. So that's a great story. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, thanks for those quick introductions. Uh, and I'll just throw it to any of the viewers here. If you have any questions, throw them into the Q&A box uh, or into the chat box and I'll get those read for our guys here. Um, so I'll kind of, again, not necessarily have to go always around the room. So kind of first person who ever wants to jump out and answer but um, you know, in that first year of real estate, um, what was it like? What were the what were the challenge? Was it? I should ask you this: Was it what you thought it was going to be? You know, did you have a good idea of real estate and you got in? And you're like, oh, this is exactly what I thought. Or were you surprised with anything? Like, oh man, this is different. When I'll, I'll go there because uh, yeah. it's very 
COVID and then very Canadian cliche. Um, when I started, again, I was part-time. So I came to Roll the Page because of the training that our brokerage offered and, and just from a national level, the training that they offered because I wasn't going to be in the office to build that rapport. Um, so when I first started, we were hit with a snowstorm that shut our entire city down for two weeks. So if you can remember mm-hmm. Snowgate, we were all coming. So I was like, okay. So that was my first hit. And then I came back for like a couple of weeks and then it was COVID. So I was like, all right, I have zero connections. I'm working full time, eight, nine to five. And, you know, I got into this because I seen someone from the outside and business just comes to him and he's living this lavish life and he's in Florida half the time and he's working half the time and he has all of this flexibility. And I was like, this is exactly what I want to do. And then it was just like, nope, this is nowhere near. <laughs> you want to do like that? You're not going to survive, buddy. <laughs> that was my first realization where, and I, I, I always have this conversation with everybody who's not in the field. It's like, if, if, you know, you might see me home from, um, you know, two to three, but from three to nine, I'm either on viewings or as Miriam said, like I'm on the phone prospecting. I mean, my entire day is taken up with a schedule where I'm with clients where I'm not. And I just never seen that side of the business. And I'm so eager mm-hmm. to it. Um, and maybe, maybe when you're five years in, 10 years in, you can kind of reel it back a little, but I know like for all of us and panelists, to be a rookie of the year, you can't do that. You got to be out every day, just no days off, phone calling, prospecting, mailers, social media, everything. And when I first started, I was like, so ignorant to it. I just had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that, uh, I, I'm, I know for myself and for some of our agents, that's uh, that would hit home. I'm curious, anyone else on the call, did anyone else have a bit of a surprise or a, I shouldn't say a rude awakening, but did you have a bit of a surprise when you started? I think we all had a surprise, just like, just like uh, he was mentioning, right? It was a uh, complete shock. You know, I think you get into it, you think, hey, how do I get my, I think I called you, Michael. I said, hey, how am I going to get my first lead? And well, I don't know, right? How am I going to do that? So, I mean, you got it. You got to get out there. A lot of times friends and family aren't going to help you in the beginning. Um, you got to get out there. You got to do cold calls. You got to get out there and walk the streets, go meet people, do whatever you can um, to gain people's trust because it's not as easy as, you know, you think you can become a real estate agent. Hey, I'm going to be making the big bucks. And this is, you know, it's how it's going to go. But uh, yeah, you work 24 seven, you know, you get up in the morning, you're checking your phone and it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a, it, I think it was a shocker. Yeah. It's definitely a shocker when I started, but you got to yeah. pay the bills. And I said, how am I going to pay the bills? And I thought, well, I'm going to get out there. I got, I got to get out there. And, you know, and I think that's why we're all here because we've worked all very, very hard. Yeah. No doubt. Well, that's something um, I'm going to circle back to um, later on a little bit and just kind of get a bit more granular with the getting out there. I mean, Anna knows me well, but, you know, that's always something I've always like, just got to get out there. Well, what does that mean? So we'll actually we'll drill home into what that means and how you guys actually got out there in a sec. Um, so curious, um, Miriam, when did you know, like when you got in this, clearly everyone here has worked hard and say, Miriam, for you, when did you know you're like, Matt, I got it. I love this business. This is for me. I'm going to do this. Well, um, when I do my first inscription, it was, you know, you, you're at school and the, 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 the teacher said, you know, it's very difficult to have one inscription. You have to do this, 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 and this, you know, you go to school and you're so you want to you want to um, I know how to say you want to to do it now you know and have something and my teacher said at school all the teachers said at school that one person in 33 um, people will stay in the in the um, in the business of real estate because it's so difficult well of course, it's the pandemic and the pandemic, it was supposed to be down and it was going up. So, uh, well, when I realized that I am I love the buyer, I love the seller, but usually if you are a good inscriptor, you can go up, up, up and up, up and you can 
go faster, but you have to be persistent. You have to be careful. You have to listen to the people. You have to be listened to the people more than talking. That's mm -hmm. why I think because people have to be listen. You know, you know, you're maybe good, but you, you didn't know really, you know? So as Anna said that it's the confidence with the, the, the customer. Huh? I don't know if I answer very well to the question, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, okay, so Abe and Wendell, what about you guys? How was um, those first, those first few, you know, weeks, days, months uh, for you when you started? Uh, so when I when I first started, it took me around uh, six to eight months until I got my first close, when, until I closed my first deal. Most of my clients wow. right now are from mm -hmm, like from the Filipino community here in Vancouver, and so a lot of them come from referrals after you, after I take um, good care of them, and basically. For the first few weeks, I was door knocking, doing open houses, calling. Um, cold calls and all of that it was just probably after how many after six weeks or I mean six months is when I when I, I closed my first deal so it, it took a long it took quite a long time for me yeah well that's you know that's uh it's you're not alone on that one I know there's people on the call where it's like that and it feels like when is it going to come but it sounds like it was a mm -hmm. slow start but then obviously it must have just really taken off Mm -hmm. Did you notice that? Was it sort of a slow and then a, a slow build and then it just sort of shot up? Yeah, exactly. So at first it was slow. It was like it, nothing was happening. But then after, after I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden it, it got exponential. It got really, really busy. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Uh, Abe, what about you? How, how was it right at the beginning? Um, I guess I didn't really have, <clears throat> I was so busy right away. I had a lot of um, potential buyers lined up. So I made my first um, sale. It was conditional, but my first sale, my first week when I got my license, I got them on Wednesday and, and did an open house on a Saturday for someone in my office and had someone come in and we did an offer. And uh, that just gave me a lot of confidence right there. So I didn't really have the struggle that many of you might get out there. Like I had a big list of contacts. So for was just uh, finding enough time in the day to follow up with everyone and, and send people listings and start showing. So I was extremely busy right off the start with that. Um, I think the hardest part was for a lot of other agents didn't uh, think I would make it or just didn't take me serious. Even like when I called and booked a showing or offer, they would try to find mistakes. I think that was one of the hardest part. Um, yeah. But yeah, after, after they seen, you know, you have a lot of buyers, you have a big list of buyers and you close a lot of deals. They, they end up taking me a little more serious. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And that's what I love about this and, and the opportunity for this, this panel from across the country. Everyone's got different markets, different backgrounds. I mean, we had people, you know, right out of university. There are some, you know, in, in business, energy sectors, healthcare, you know, all these different wide um, ranges of experiences and different starts, right? Not everybody's the same. And that's what I'm, I'm a real estate nerd. So I love the fact that this business, everyone can do it differently, right? How, you, how we get to quote unquote success all the different routes, right? It's never the same. Although there are some obvious commonalities. So, but Abe, you mentioned there just some of those challenges. I mean, what was, um, what was everyone else's, what was the biggest challenge right away? And you're like, okay, I got to learn this real quick. I got to overcome this real quick. What was um, the kind of the biggest challenge facing you right away and how you overcame it? I think just uh, real estate in general. I, I bought my first home six or four years prior to that. Um, I didn't know a whole lot about real estate property in general, so I had to really go out there. So what I often did is I would book showings for just myself. I didn't even have a buyer. And uh, just to, or if it was anybody in my office, I would go to their property and just even, I, I booked a few home inspectors too, just to kind of learn more about properties themselves. Because I, yeah, one of the biggest challenges was people would ask me, certain things about a property and I just didn't have the answer. So yeah. There's so just getting to know that product and educating yourself. It's awesome. Yeah. I had the same thing. I started 23, didn't know lots of thing about a house. <laughs> so I get it. Uh, Ryan, what about you? How what was your that biggest challenge, biggest hurdle at the beginning? 
Uh, for me, the beginning was uh, I, uh, I was a part time agent. So I need to, to really sell the fact that you're going to get a full time service and a, you know, and a part time kind of uh, resume. Um, so it really took a lot of evenings and it took a lot of nights and weekends. And, and I just, you know, did I fall down on one job? Absolutely. But I, I, I put more eggs in my, my real estate basket because of doing so. And then I was able to leave that job. So that was all part of my plan. <laughs> but, uh, it all- <laughs> but it was, it was tough yeah. to sell that. And I mean, and because of that, and because of my past careers, it's still tough to, to sell myself and get into the commercial aspect of it. Right. Because, you know, I do want to get bigger homes, more luxury homes and more commercial, but you know, I'm 34 years old. So it's tough to sell that as, you know, how long am I going to be doing real estate before I leave and go do something else. Right. Right. Gotcha. How long did I, how long, um, until you became full-time? Um, year and a half. Year and a half. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I left. Right. Uh, so my, this is, I'm into my third year. So I started, uh, I can't remember when did I started. I started um, in January. So for my time frame to be rookie of the year was a bit messed up. Uh, so I'm in my third, like January was my third year. Um, so gotcha. yeah. So this time last year, year and a half to almost two years before I left and went full time. Gotcha. Awesome. Not looking back, eh? Uh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> right on. Uh, Anna, what about you? What was the biggest challenge when you started? How'd you overcome it? Oh, what was the biggest challenge? I've had a lot of challenges. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know if I can pinpoint just one challenge, honestly. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think Abe was saying like how there's a lot of, it's challenging that I feel like a lot as a new agent, a lot of people don't want to bring you deals. A lot of older agents, like, you know, I, I, I hate to put it out there, but I think that was the biggest challenge is proving yourself in the, in the industry. Right. Um, and you got to catch on fast. you got to catch on to the market trends. You got to, you know, you got to be quick. And I don't, I don't think I could pinpoint just one challenge. Um, I think you just go with it, roll with the punches, you make a mistake and just keep, you know, I call Michael, hey, Michael, what do I do to fix this? <laughs> All right, well, fix it, move on, let it go and just keep moving forward, right? Don't look back kind of thing is, so that's how I kind of made way with my, my uh, with the business. Yeah, awesome. Miriam, how about you? What was, uh, what was the challenge for you when you started? Well, I think at the beginning, the most biggest challenge is to be organized and be calm, take it simple, uh, be uh, generous uh, with the customer, ingenious. It, it gave you some results to have the success. If the customer don't know that you are uh, organized, they would say, okay, I don't take her. So. We, there is a lots of agents, so they can do whatever they want. They can call on the the signs and do another uh, do other business with other agents. So you just have to uh, keep good vibe positive and just show them that you're not new. You know, you're just having experience to the sale. You know, that's how I work. I'm not working that I'm a new uh, real estate agent. I'm working because I have 23 years experience in the sales. So uh, you can work like that. It's not fault, you know, it's it's just because, and they will know that for sure, I'm not 20 years old, I'm 44. So I have confidence on me. I. I help other um, new uh, agent who's just beginning. And I think I'm a, a, a girl, a, a woman who's work in the team, you know? I like other people having success, mm-hmm. okay? And uh, for sure it was difficult to go knock on the door. And at the beginning, I don't want to 
to uh, keep my business of the printer because my print my business printer Hargraves it's it's another business and I didn't want all my customer other customer knows that I'm a real estate agent and I don't taking care of them you know so I was like oh my god how can I do it by myself alone and I know a lot of my customer who's real estate agent didn't know that I was going to be agent so I was like okay now I have to tell everybody but I go first knock on the door do a lot of inscription by myself and after I say to all my customer and you know what all my customers were so happy and they say if it don't um if it don't uh, take uh, too much time of your business you can continue what you want to do because i'm doing this at the night in the weekend and it don't so at the beginning i was beginning in my um my business at full time and i was thinking with the pandemic, when I began, it was going to be quiet. So I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. In April, uh, I was uh, last year, April or May, I don't remember. I do my um, my commercial until okay, cool. until December. So it was very crazy. Yeah, yeah. that's but, awesome. That's a great story. Yeah. Um, so you guys mentioned that, uh, through this, you know, um, getting out there, I even heard some knocking on doors, things like that. So specifically when it comes to marketing, prospecting, generating that business, right, which is always, you know, the biggest thing for any realtor, you got to have the leads to work with. I'll start with Wendell. Wendell, what did you do? And it seems like that's that six months, you know, that, that slow time, what were you doing consistently to try to get out there, you know, specifically with marketing, prospecting, what did you do that work that you found? Okay, and I'm getting some business, getting some clients. Uh, the main thing that I found that worked was um, mainly most of the clients came from referrals. And so just working on those people who I knew that would refer, who would, who would be um, the top, uh, top referring partners, I mainly worked with them. I, I um, basically networked with them, had dinner all the time, going out almost every night. Um, did open houses still, but the main thing that worked was working with um, those top referral partners, people who would refer gotcha. as many times as they could. Yeah. So you would just, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, so just sort of wine and dine them. Did you do anything else? Did you have any sort of like, did you have newsletters that go out to your database or those partners or what else did you do to target those top referrers? So when I did, when I did start getting, um, when I, when I did start closing, I, I did, um, add them to my database. I sent them newsletters every quarter. I sent them, um, updates on what their property, um, could be selling for now. And, and that definitely worked a year after when prices went up and then they contacted me again, they, they remembered me. So I just basically worked on on past clients, referrals, referral partners. Good stuff. And Abe, you mentioned, uh, you know, you kind of had that referral book in place. So how did you reach out? I mean, I, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but sometimes I find new agents, they, they have that, um, that fear of contacting the people they know to try to get business. They don't want to be that pushy salesperson. How did you approach your network when it came to, hey, you had these relationships in place. How did you approach them to, to get business? Yeah, that's a good question. I uh, <clears throat> sometimes felt like that too. You know, I don't want to be the annoying person that always just talks about real estate, but I figured who cares? This is my job. This is what I'm going to do. So whatever, I would just have a conversation about a completely different subject than real estate, but always try to refer back to real estate somehow or talk about their friends and family, see if they already bought a house. So a lot of it uh, was like that too, referrals um, <clears throat> from people that you work with in the past. And uh, I got a lot of Royally Page leads as well from the Royally Page system. So most of them I found were really successful too. There were most, most of them were eight uh, buyers that um, didn't have agents, so just with proper follow-up, finding them properties. I uh, did a, a, a big number of sales from Royal Page Leads, so those were two of my biggest ones, the referrals and 
royalty page. And then sometimes when you have a property for sale, you get uh, people that contact you through realtor.ca and see your sign. And some of those too, they don't, uh, they're not ready to buy or sell in a, sometimes in, in a year or more. So I had good success from that. Too. Nice. I'll throw it to the rest of the group there. Anybody else have any, uh, what were some of the things that worked that you found? Hey, I can't believe I tried this thing and it worked. What marketing prospecting activities did you guys do that worked? I work a lot with Facebook. Okay. I work just with Facebook. I didn't send, I, I sell paper and marketing paper for all my agent. I have 45 agents who's my customer in the print and I never send a, a paper uh, by, po by uh, Post Canada. So mm -hmm. for me, it's because I didn't have time. If I, I do this, maybe I will have too much lead and I cannot serve them carefully, you know? So I, I do all alone. I don't have a team, but I want to work it very good and so my best marketing is Facebook and I appreciate all my, 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 my buyers, my seller, and I go put my sign, I go take it off my sign, I go put my soul, take it off my soul, I give her champagne, I give her, I give them uh, some uh, coureur de bois, whiskey, I give them a, a, a block of uh, for, for, for the house, when they, they buy with me, when they sold with me, I give a big block of wood to, to, do, to, um, to, do, to make some, kit, some stuff in the kitchen, you know? So okay. I, I really appreciate all my customer and I, I just want to, to say them that I'm so happy that they do business with me. This is the most important thing, it's the customer. So you need to put them on the spot all the ways, not you, the customer. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like that. Brian, how about you? Yeah. What was my, uh, work for you? My best, so I guess I've, I've gone all in on social media, uh, primarily Instagram. Um, but the last year I've been just, just filling everything I can into my Google, my Google business profile. Um, we are seeing a lot of people move to the province because of affordability. Um, so we're getting a lot of people from Ontario, um, a lot of clients from Vancouver, uh, and they're moving here because, you know, they can sell their home in, uh, you know, their town home in Oakville, Ontario for $1.6 million. And then they can buy a 3,500 square foot two story here for $450,000. So they're able to retire and, you know, they, people, they, they don't even have ties here, but what they're doing is the same thing you do if you're looking for a new iPad or a new laptop. You're going to Google and you're going to say, top real estate agent in St. John's, Newfoundland. And just because I have reviews and I have, you know, uh, other, other uh, lines of interest here that influence my local authority, they're going to find me there. So I found Google to be uh, probably the biggest breadwinner for 2022 for me. Um, but... Mm -hmm. Instagram is definitely my, my vessel where I reach, you know, my center of influence and, you know, just local content in general. Yeah. So on that topic, and I'll throw Anna into this as well. And uh, Miriam, you guys mentioned Facebook, uh, any, any of you actually, but you guys mentioned social media. Some people it's, you know, they can't take two steps without doing something on social media. Other ones, it's not for them. How has that, so what specifically are you guys posting out there? What do you, what actually works? What gets leads coming in? Are you sponsoring ads or is it just that local content? What are some of the things that you're finding that work specifically on social media? Uh, for social media, I think it's uh, adding as many people as you can to social media, making your social media, um, trying to stand out from the rest. It's, it's hard. Um, it's definitely a, a challenge. Um, but once you have kind of get on a roll and you get down that path of people wanting to, to use you and they see that you have solds, um, they, they see that you have reviews. Google business is a great way to do it. Uh, you know, that's, I, I prefer that to anything else um, to get my reviews on Google business. Um, and you know what? I mean, like Miriam, I started a commercial. I started a team 
And I think from there, it's kind of really taking off. People want to see that uh, they're going to have customer service. You know, maybe they've had bad experiences. And I felt like I was overwhelmed with a lot of work. And I'm, I'm happy to give um, my teammates a little bit of, um, I guess, more customer service that my clients can receive. Um, so, you know, that's how I kind of went about it. And I mean, yeah, social media, Instagram, uh, Facebook, they're all, all great ways to get leads. Um, and once you have that first listing, you know, just grow from there because people are going to say you have a sold. Okay. Well, Hey, let's call up Anna. Let's call up, you know, uh, once they see that you're doing well, honestly, or they see that you have your first listing and you're, you know, you kind of know a little bit about the business they're, they're going to call you. Um, but yeah, I think keep growing as an agent, keep getting out there, talking to people. Um, you know, I talk to people all the time. At home, I'm not. I'm not so. I'm not so sociable. But when I go out, gotta talk to people. You gotta be able to talk to people, um, and you gotta be empathetic towards people, right? And you gotta serve your clients, and that's what it means a lot. And you know what? Everyone tells me, Anna, you listen so well, and that's all that really matters. That's like Miriam was saying. People just want to know that you're there for them, and that's you know you're just, you're a human being just like them. So connect with people. That's that's my biggest thing is just connecting. Yeah, all fantastic, good stuff. Uh, I'm curious, what mistakes have you guys made? Um, what what could you go back and say? Oh crap! Either I wasted some money, or I wasted time, or I shouldn't have said that. Uh, did anything comes out? You know, on, on the even the funny side of things, where you look back at the first year and say, "Oh man, if I could do that over again, I would not do that. That was a waste of time or a waste of money." Any mistakes? Well, for me, we have here uh, Du Proprio, who's green. Uh, we said the AVPP. So I, for about six or seven times, I didn't have a CCA. It calls a uh, contract for buyers. For me. Right. So sorry, I just wanted, so, sorry to interrupt you, Miriam. For those who don't know Du Proprio, that's, that's Calm Free. That's uh, Purple Bricks, Yale Fair Square, the heck they are. Um, that's Du Proprio is Calm Free. So just for those who didn't know, and they're a big player out there in Quebec. So, <laughs> Not everybody knows that, yeah. So for me, uh, a contract is like a hand, you know? So I was thinking in my head that all the customer, well, sometimes they love you, sometimes they don't like you, so it's okay. But I was, by, I was uh, shopping a lot of house, like 10 house last year, and I didn't have a CCA, and they just call me when I do the, my my follow-up and I and they say oh, I'm sorry I just bought by with the proprio you know so I say okay but you can go with me okay and they say well I can do it by myself now so I lost a, a lot of customer like that like six or seven so so I was working for zero so I do uh, I, I put gas in my car so it was my biggest um error and now here in Quebec we have a new rule who's gonna be introduced for the first of June that you will be obligated to have a CCA so I think a uh, lot of agents are not very happy because it's a lot of paper more but I think it's beautiful for us because it will try to 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 give a, a, a hands I don't know how to say but it's going to be better for us and we were not going to work in, you know, so it, yeah, it would be I gotcha. contract. So it would be good. Yeah. Well, I know in Manitoba here, we've had, uh, I don't know, I'm not that familiar with your CCA, but um, in January 1st in Manitoba, we've had to have mandatory service agreements where a realtor has to put on paper, disclose the services they're offering to, to clients. So they've taken steps baby steps towards it but uh no absolutely i know I, my very first client as well uh i lost uh to uh it's, it's to comfrey they went and bought privately after working with them rurally for a number of weeks and uh, filled the gas tank so miriam i i empathize with you been there it's uh it's no fun working for free uh about the rest of the group any mistakes that stand out i think the biggest thing for me was just not bringing in support staff um at an earlier time uh, I don't have a team I'm, I'm building there, but I mean, I have you know, a, a marketing administrator and, and an office administrator. Um, but I think 
things just for me happened too quickly that I didn't take advantage of delegation. Um, and again, came back to still working on five, working every evening and weekend, and then still having a wife and kids. So it was, it was very tough um, the last few years. Um, but I think that my biggest mistake was just looking at the dollar sign associated to hiring versus, you know, the, the output and the time saved for me. Um, and I think that is probably something I still will kick myself in the behind for, for not jumping over a bit quicker. All right. Cool. That's a good one. Here's Abe Wendell. Anything? Yeah, I think for me. Go ahead. Yeah, I think for me it was yeah the biggest. Most of my clients that I've lost that went to another agent is because of uh, lack of uh, response or not follow up in time. And sometimes it's just it's within hours or even within within minutes. If you don't get to your phone, they will go somewhere else. Especially if they're first time clients, um, they've been referred, but you don't pick up right away is very often when they go somewhere else. So I think the biggest mistake is to, or for, for me was to not follow up properly. There's been a couple where I talked to the people for a long time. Um, I was expecting a listing. I told them they had, they were supposed to contact me when they were ready. Um, they felt like they didn't, uh, I wasn't willing to help and they went to another agent because I didn't follow up with them. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, nope. been there and done that too. Yeah. Wendell, you were saying? Uh, the same thing that happened to Abe, but basically, and also to Ryan, I didn't um, think of hiring anyone earlier. I should have, uh, because when it got busy, it got really busy, like extremely busy. And so I was by myself. I didn't have any assistant. I didn't even have an unlicensed assistant. So just hiring someone earlier or even thinking about it um, would have definitely helped me. It's just that was probably one of my bigger mistakes. I'm, I'm hiring someone now. I'm thinking of hiring some, somebody now, but it's just, it's hard when you're busy every day. It's hard to decide who yeah. it's to interview and all of that. Everything that comes with hiring. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, and that's what's, you know, encouragement to all you guys is, you know, um, is pushing through all those, you know, those, those mistakes, those failures, right? That's, uh, it's not a failure if you learn from them, right? And you make a mistake and you learn from it and get better. And that's, uh, something that's going to carry you again, you know, all your success going forward. Just keep learning from those mistakes because God knows I've made, we've all made <laughs> countless of them, but that's the thing is learning from them, moving on. Uh, I just was looking here through a, a chat. There was a question specifically here actually for Ryan. I just talked about, it's been on the technical side of things, but that's okay. Um, one of our agents is actually from Nova Scotia um, and is asking if Newfoundland is implementing an out of province resident tax like Nova Scotia. Uh, no. Uh, thankfully, not as of right now. It's nothing that's being spoken of, but uh, no. Sorry. Okay. Um, Google going off in the background there. Um, but yeah, no, uh, nothing like that as, as of right now, I'll say. Um, you know, hopefully it stays. Cool. Uh, I've got another question that came in here from Hayden. He was actually brand, he's brand spanking new. I think he got his license last week. So uh, he has two questions. He said, how many phone calls or messages uh, or people, I guess, do you reach out to a day from your sphere of influence? That would be number, question number one. There's a follow-up. So how many people do you talk to from your, your database every day, or do you try to? Does anybody have a target? My goal is 30. 30? Yeah. Awesome. And is that prime, just curious, is it primarily, are you texting, are you DMing, are you phoning, texting, all the above? How's your, what's your contact method of choice? Yeah, I, uh, it's, it could be um, phone, text, just a conversation in the hallway kind of thing. Um, just any means of point of contact. Um, I read an article there last week on, on texting is not as good. So I'm a little torn right now, but uh, <laughs> I, still, I still do texting. I think for the younger demographic, they don't want to talk to me. I, I like talking on the phone, but uh, uh, I still think texting is, is there to stay. Um, so any means of contact, it could be email, um, but I don't categorize a mass email as a touch point for that, for that goal. Yeah, that's good. Does anyone else have any targets with their database? How many people they talk to your day? For me in the morning, I just do 45 minutes and that's it every day, not Sunday and Saturday, but in the morning or in the afternoon, not too much because you're going to be, you know, full. I don't want to be full. I just want to be having fun 
in my job and just said that uh, I'm just calling for follow-up or just, uh, uh, I call the expiry, we said in uh, here in uh, Montreal. So I just, just a little bit every day, not too much because you don't want to be full. Yeah. I would say about the same, about 20, 25 usually on average, some days 50. Um, but I try to do at least at least 20. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, there's also kind of a follow-up, I guess, for um specifically it says for for younger agents. Uh oh, and for the last question. Yeah. So anybody, I guess, on the on the younger side of things here, uh, though that's what he's asking about for trying to get in with your friends' parents. So maybe you have uh, friends that are young and if they're young, maybe they don't own homes. I know when I started, I was 23 years old, similar. It's like, okay, well, friends aren't buying homes because they're 23 and they're, they're broke. <laughs> so how do you get the in to the parents? Are you contacting friends, parents directly, or are you using your friends as the in to contact the parents who actually have the homes, who have the real estate to sell? How did you, um, I guess, contact or hook up with friends, parents? Not hook up with, that's a bad word. How did you contact friends, parents and get an in real estate wise? <laughs> um, for me, again, social media has been successful. Um, I just try to stay consistent. So, and then within my post, I'll also, you know, bring it back to uh, once a month, I'll do a post for a listing or, or whatever and just highlight how many people I've reached. Um, and I feel like that resonates um, because, you know, you're trying to sell, anybody can sell a home. Uh, but it's just getting that top dollar. And the only way to get that top dollar is to reach as many people. So, you know, if, if I'm out doing this on YouTube and, you know, I reached 10,000 people last month, which, you know, nobody else locally is doing, that is going to resonate with and reach the parents. Nice. And just professional. Everyone know? Or the <laughs> yes, no. Yeah. Curious, I'll just open up to anyone. Does anyone else have, did everyone else have a strategy for getting to parents? For me, I usually yeah call directly or I don't really go through friends to to get to the parents. Just I sometimes have better relationship with with their parents than I do with uh, the people my <laughs> age. So uh, usually works out yeah. for me. But. Absolutely, Wendell. Curious, do you have any comments on that or? Um, definitely. Uh, basically, what what um Abe said usually. The, the friends, my friends don't really know anything about real estate and I do know their parents. So <laughs> I don't really go to um, them first about, about buying or selling. They might, they might mention that they, they will be selling something, but I just go to their parents first instead of my friends. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Well, that's where that's uh, so Hayden answered that question. Yeah, follow the money, go to the parents. And I know we even had some um, some other agents uh, in our office uh, work with that and have to that challenge of being super young, super new. How do you get to the parents? And it really is, it's coming down to knowing your stuff. And like what Ryan said, know your stuff, have a wide audience. And when you go over to the house, uh, even if you hang out with friends, you know, keep an eye on, you know, maybe be a little bit more intentional about the conversations you have around uh the island in the kitchen with a friend's parents you know maybe you know i'm not you know every mile there's two miles of ditch i'm not saying go over there in a suit and tie but you know you can go over to your friend's house casually or you can go to your friend's house a little bit more uh polished etc and have the conversations with the parents to really just slip in your expertise right uh, through those conversations so um absolutely so thanks so, so far everyone so kind of i want to kind of wrapping up here with with our hour um if you could, I guess this is sort of ties in with a lot of things, but if you could go back in time to when you started, and this will translate to anybody who's, who's brand new as well, what would you tell yourself? What advice would you give yourself if you could go back in that two years ago, three years ago, whatever it's been, and look at yourself and say, what, would you, what advice would you give yourself three years ago? I'll start with Miriam. Well, as I said, or as everybody said, uh, well, uh, to be organized and have a good relation with everybody. So uh, it's very important. Well, if you were in the sale before, whatever the job that you had, just have good relation and just continue your good work. Eh? It's yeah. the most important yeah. Just be human, just be grateful, positive, passionate. Uh, you, you, and they will be 
trans transparency with the people, you know, so they will know that you're real. I like that. Yeah, be real. Anna, what about you? Ah. Uh uh, you know what? I think uh, I tell myself to take a bit of a breather. You know, sometimes I'm a little bit too hard on myself. Um, I work seven days a week. I think for the past two years, I have not had a summer off um, to enjoy. I mean, you know, you have a few hours here and there to enjoy with your family. But on the other hand, too, it's also if I didn't work, if I wasn't so hard on myself, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Right. So, um, yeah, it just kind of yeah, take a breather though. Don't be so hard on yourself. Definitely. You know, things will come, they, things will come as they may, right. Just keep, keep going at it. And, uh, yeah, just keep, keep going. Yeah. Well, I just, to, to chime in on that, um, I, I get it and I identify with that as well. And that is, you know, that drive, um, that, you know, the pressure you put on yourself or, or ourselves does help you succeed for sure. Right. It's what pushes people, what drives people, but we just have to make sure, and I have to do this in my life and my businesses, make sure it doesn't take the joy with it though, right? To make sure that, okay, I'm gonna enjoy, put the pressure, I'm gonna do the next thing, but I don't wanna let it rob my joy. I don't let it rob that, that passion that Marine was talking about. And that's what's, it can get tough because if you just beat yourself up all the time, eventually you're gonna have some bruises <laughs> on yourself, right? So it's when to take, um, you know, put the gloves on, I guess, and, and be gentle with yourself as well. and. Uh, don't let it rob your joy. But anyways, I interrupted. Uh, Ryan, what about you? What was uh, what advice would you give to your former self? Uh, it's okay to let some people go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, yeah. we all have those clients that, you know, they don't care if they work with us or if they go with the commission for a comp free, whatever it is. Um, they, you know, it's, it's, you can tell from the get go what you're working with. Um, and if, you know, it's not jiving and you're not, you, you just don't feel it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. you don't need to run around town chasing yeah love that one that's a, and that's tough for a new, for being new right especially to let some of those people go uh let those uh those painful clients just hit the bricks but uh again great advice abe yeah i agree with ryan too sometimes you gotta let just let some people go um there's a lot of other agents that are are eager to work with anyone and sometimes refer to other agents even if you think they're too complicated or if you can't handle everything at once um one of the mistakes or not a mistake but if i could go back i would probably be a pizza delivery driver just to get to know your your hometown get to know the people and probably another part-time job of some sort just i don't know work at timmy's drive through just to get to know a lot of people and get to know the area and things like that i think that you can get a lot of connections that way too Wendell? Um, basically, basically what, um, what Abe was saying, mainly going, going out and introducing myself more, going out and socializing more in the beginning. I know I, even before I got my license and even before I got, um, I began in real estate, I should have done more socializing, more getting out there and talking to other people and getting to know other people. Yeah. It's amazing how, how, you know, simple the business is as far as that's what it is, right? This business is about relationships, how many people you can connect with. Um, it's hard work as everyone here has demonstrated, but it can be that simple, right? Just connecting and engaging with as many people as possible. So mm -hmm. um, I guess I have uh, one last question for you. Who's coming to Winnipeg in September <laughs> for the national sales conference? If you didn't know. Hey, eh? okay. All the hands shot up there. Anyways, I encourage you guys to come to the sales conference in Winnipeg. We'll treat you really well. We'll be great hosts. Um, but again, I got to thank you all again for taking time on your busy schedules, your busy days from across the country in different time zones and uh, different marketplaces to, to join us uh, today. I will make sure I send you the recording as well uh, so you can use it for your own promotional purposes or anything that you want to do maybe not for your google business page there ryan and uh, but again i can't thank you enough i know on behalf of all of our agents we can't thank you enough for sharing some of your insights um and into that that first that, that first couple of years right because um we were all there everybody on this call has been there where you are and you guys are really did a hell of a job congratulations again on all your success and uh we wish you nothing but even more success as you go forward in your career so thank you guys again Wait, we're going to take a picture now. Yeah, for sure. You want to take a picture? 
<laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. I'll, uh, do you want me to screenshot it or let's do a. What the heck? Where's my screenshot? Why is this not working? There we go. Okay. So we do a little screenshot here. So give me, give, that's your best smile or something. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, right on. I'll make sure I send that screenshot to you guys as well. So again, thank you guys so much. I'll see if there's any other questions or comments that came in. There's a lot of stuff, people saying thank you, great info, which is awesome. All right, cool. Well, thanks again, guys. I'll let you get back to it. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you again. I'll send this all over to you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.